where you can make a small business loan to someone anywhere in the world and help lift them out of poverty. It works like this. You go to the Cuba website, browse through the descriptions of people and their businesses, select one, make a loan for as little as $25, and over the next few months, you'll get paid back with interest. The idea is that you've helped someone help themselves, and ultimately, it won't cost you a dime. So right now, I'm going to answer a few typical questions about Cuba. First of all, why are loans even a good idea? I mean, isn't that how people get in trouble to begin with, by taking out loans? Well, Cuba doesn't make loans to help people make ends meet. Cuba makes small business loans to people who already have an existing business, and a business with a track record. Now that business might be grandma's fruit stand in a very poor country, but it's a business that's been around for a while. There's a bit of history here. International charities have found that if you make a small business loan to someone who's the main breadwinner in their home, you'll almost always get paid back. That's because those loans are considered a chance of a lifetime, not an opportunity to max out a credit card. Okay, the next question. The Kiva website has lots of pictures of all these people, and how do you know they're even there? I mean, do they even exist? Well, Kiva has an internship system of observers who go meet up with the borrowers all over the world, and they're called Kiva Fellows. They make detailed reports of their findings and post them on the Kiva website. They also make video blogs of their journeys, so you and I can get a good look at where our money is going. And the next question. You say Kiva works with lending agencies. 
Well, what's a lending agency? They're like a credit union in a remote area. community-based, and go boldly where no bank has gone before. Many have been lending in their communities for years. Now, these lending agencies may not be new, but I'll tell you what is new. The instantaneous international connection. The way a lending agency can upload a borrower's information to the Kiva website, and it gets viewed by all of us. Grace came to the attention of Nathan when he found her story, along with her photograph, on the website of a San Francisco-based nonprofit called Kiva. This is Grace Ayaz's entry, so it, it just tells like how much I've loaned to her and how much of my loan she's repaid. I'm glad that I could be of help to you. Did you purchase the refrigerator? refrigerator? Has this impacted your ability to produce and market your peanut butter? Nathan's one of a small group of lenders who loaned Grace the money she needed. So much, Nathan. I purchased the fridge and bought the packing materials, and this has really enabled me to produce more. Okay, now you heard me use this phrase, Kiva lending ultimately won't cost you a dime. So what does that even mean? Well, you could say that your Kiva loans take on a life of their own. Once you've made a few and each borrower begins to make payments, pretty soon you'll notice the total that you get paid back is more than what you need to make even more loans. And so the thing keeps growing without you again having to dip into your pocketbook. Now here's another question. If it's the lending agencies that facilitate the lending, then what does Kiva do besides put all those pictures up on the website? Okay, well, as far as I can tell, the Kiva staff is made up of equal parts Silicon Valley nerd and economic majors. So you have some people whose job it is to assign risk factors to each loan, examine the cash on hand and transparency of each lending agency, calculate debt burden ratios, and all those things that the big banks didn't bother to do in 2008 before they crashed. And on the other side, you have the Kiva web gurus who set it up so that every time somebody makes a loan or makes a payment or pays off a loan, the website's automatically updated. So if you've ever wondered why the Kiva website refreshes every two seconds, it's because it wants to reflect that new tally. That means that in some corner of the world, something good is happening in Kiva land. And here's the final question. After you've made a loan through Kiva, you notice that you get paid back a few dollars at a time. So, isn't that extremely wasteful? I mean, doesn't it cost a lot to make such a small transaction? And that's why traditional banks don't do microloans, because you can't make money off of that stuff. Well, if you notice, when you make a Kiva loan, it's facilitated through PayPal, and PayPal has donated their services to Kiva. PayPal, as we know, knows a thing or two about streamlining transactions. So it costs very little to process someone's payment, even if it is small.